Okay, so good morning and welcome to this particular class. I'll take you through chapter 8 of PHP 7 and in this chapter we'll be looking at a very interesting tool that is used to make web pages more user-friendly by ensuring that uh, you can be able to interact with the backend without necessarily reloading your entire page. It's a very interesting tool, and that tool is called Ajax. And Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So generally, it's just JavaScript. In fact, it's jQuery. And uh, it, it, it formats data based on the XML design because it's simply a way of exchanging data between the front end and the back end uh, without necessarily refreshing your entire page. As you've seen with all our labs so far, whenever you submit data on a form or you click on any button and you need to submit data to the server, then the entire page is reloaded. But we can avoid that by using Ajax. And I'm sure you've already seen this feature, for example, uh, on many social media sites, whereby, for example, you click or you double tap to love a picture and uh, it doesn't necessarily reload the entire page. Uh, and you begin uh, seeing new posts. No, it simply remains there, but the like is updated and the number changes. Uh, so they use Ajax for uh, such, such a feature. Okay. Now, again, we've said that Ajax is asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And generally, it's a technique for creating fast and dynamic web pages. Now, it is fast because, for example, uh, even before you complete typing, for example, uh, you, you can be given some suggestions and you click on a particular suggestion and there you have it. Too. So uh, that makes it fast and it's dynamic in the sense that you do not need to reload your entire page. So it's more interactive. Uh, now, Ajax allows web pages to be updated asynchronously. Uh, what does that mean? you are able to exchange small amounts of data with the server behind the scenes, behind the scenes. So this means that it's possible, for example, to update parts of a web page without the need to reload the entire web page. Uh, so if something changes in the backend, then uh, that is in the database, for example, we do not need to change the, uh, to reload the page in order to get that update. So that is what Ajax does. Now, uh, here we, we are calling the previous sites that never used to use Ajax classic web pages. So what we build so far in our practicals, they are classic web pages. That means that we have to reload the entire, we must reload the entire page in order for the content to change. But with Ajax, we will not need to do that. Now, examples of applications that are utilizing Ajax include all the Google applications, Facebook applications, and the, the list is just too long, it can't fit here. Generally, any web application now most likely is using Ajax. So these are just a few examples. Now, how does Ajax work? You need to understand that. You need to understand that. Now, of course, we have two things here. We have the client, so this is the client, and we have the server. So the client is working on a browser. Now, on the browser, a client will trigger an event. Now, that event can be triggered by clicking on a button or typing on uh, an input box or even clicking on an input box. Uh, when we learned JavaScript last time, we learned about the JavaScript event handler. So all those events, 
and all those events that can be triggered by the user. Now, when an event occurs, that will create what we call an XML HTTP request. So you can see we have XML HTTP then request, and it's using camel case. So other than XML, uh, H is also uppercase and R is uppercase. So it's gonna create an XML HTTP request object. And after that, it's going to send that particular HTTP request to the server via the internet. Now, the server is going to receive the HTTP request and process it. And after processing it, it's going to create a response and send the data back to the browser. Now, the browser, so now we are here. Now we're here. So it's going to send it back to the browser. Now the browser is going to receive the data and process it using JavaScript. And it's going to update the content of your page now. Uh, now using JavaScript and HTML most likely. So it, it's that simple. Uh, it's that simple. Simply send a request using a HTTP request. And after that, the server will create a response and send it back to you. And the JavaScript will uh, uh, the JavaScript now will display what has just been sent. And we, we, we can actually give an example of this uh, using, for example, Facebook. So when you click on a like on the like button, uh, a HTML HTTP request is created. Then the HTTP request to increase uh, uh, or to register that particular like is sent to the server. So maybe it's gonna send uh, uh, your user ID and the post ID. Uh, the server is going to receive that request and process it. So by processing it means uh, just adding uh, a single like, for example, uh, to that particular uh, data in the database, then send back the new number of likes the new number of likes now it's gonna send it now to to the server or what's wrong with my keyboard is not working just a moment okay i think it's working okay so the, the response which is now the number of likes Remember, many other people might also be liking it. So even though, for example, the likes were 10, the response you might get might be 15 uh, because other people have also liked and it has been updated in the database. So simply going to send that to your browser. It's going to receive, for example, 15, and it's going to display the new number of likes for that particular post. I'm going to change it maybe now to 15. Maybe previously it was 10. So that is the journey, really, of Ajax uh, automation. Now, uh, Ajax is based on internet standards. Internet standards. As you've seen, it uses XML, which is an internet standard, and also HTTP, which is a protocol that is used to exchange data between the client and the server. Now, uh, uh, these really are the technologies that Ajax will use to update that particular like. So the first technology to use is the XML HTTP request. So this one is used to create an object that is format the data in a way that it can be sent through uh, the internet through a HTTP request. So that is what an XML HTTP request really does. Uh, it's used to send the data, format it and send it uh, asynchronously to the server. Now, the other thing that Ajax uses is JavaScript and, of course, DOM. So uh, DOM is Document Object Model. So JavaScript, of course, just used to display or pick the data from the form. Because really, Ajax, as we said, is asynchronous JavaScript. So it actually uses JavaScript uh, when it comes to its syntax. Eh? Then it can also, of course, JavaScript can be able to change the style uh, of, of uh, the data that you're seeing in your browser uh, through CSS. And of course, we have XML, which is now used to format the data that is being sent over 
uh, over the, uh, the internet. So it's a main simply for data formatting. Well, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, now it is important to mention that Ajax can work in any browser and on any operating system. Uh, can work on any browser, any browser, and in any operating system. Maybe I should add an image here for the logos of the most popular operating systems. Okay, then uh, when was, I, I don't know when Ajax was invented, but Ajax became very popular through these particular products that Google built, and all of you have used it. It's called Google Suggest. So how does Google Suggest use? My name is Kelvin Kariuki, and yes, I'm featuring as number one on uh, the Google Suggestion list. So if you type on Google, Kelvin K-A, then you, you simply get a list of everyone whose name begins with those particular texts there. Eh? So this is, these are all the suggestions that I'm getting for that. So that is what we call Google Suggest. And yes, Google Suggest uses Ajax and they began this in 2005. So you can just see how it makes work easier for the user uh, uh, and faster because they don't have to type the whole thing. They just click on Kelvin Karyuki and boom, they'll now get all the Kelvin Karyukis uh, that are on the internet. So that is how uh, uh, it really became popular. Now, of course, after that, uh, uh, after that, also Facebook implemented their like uh, and so on and so forth, and that's how it picked up. Okay, so here is an example using how to use Ajax with PHP. In this example, we are going to uh, learn how a web page can communicate with a web server while a user types some characters in an input field. So what we want is uh, the user will start typing the first name, for example, in this text box, and uh, this particular PHP file is gonna give some suggestions uh, depending on the characters that you've typed on that particular input box. So let's have a look at this. Mm. Okay, do I turn it? Okay, so let me just go through this. Uh, let's focus on, on the body part first here. So here, uh, we are having the form. So the form is beginning here, and the form is ending here. The form has a single form control. It's an input type text. And one of the attributes we have here is the on key up. Please remember this, this is very, uh, very important. On key up, on key up. So that's an attribute. Now, on key up means when the user is typing, if they type A, so on key up is when they let go the A button on the keyboard. So that's what you call on key up. So on key up, this particular uh, function, JavaScript function, is going to be called. And this particular function is called show hint. Show hint. Show hint. Now, other than that, it's going to pass this value. Uh, the value that is being typed. And how do we get that value that is being typed? By using this uh, JavaScript uh, function, this dot value, this dot value. So when we do that, then uh, whatever is being typed is going to be passed. Every time the user lifts up, uh, they let go the key they, they, they were typing. It's gonna call the function and pass it. Uh, uh, the value that the user has typed so far. Eh? Okay, so this particular value that they expected to enter, of course, is, is, is their first name. Eh? Okay, so that is it about the form. Uh, uh, and uh, the other thing you need to know here now is we have a paragraph here where we are printing the suggestions. Now, here we have a span 
span is just like a paragraph, only that it is in line. In line meaning it does not automatically force the next thing to begin on a new line. You know, if you have a paragraph, then it's block, meaning if you have another paragraph, it's gonna begin from the next line. But span, just like a paragraph, but it doesn't, it's in line. Eh? So we have a span and uh, end span, and you can see that we have nothing in this span. Eh? We have nothing, but we've given it an ID of text hint. This is also very important. So that is the ID of this particular span, ID text hint. So we, we, we're gonna update inside this span, we're gonna update the suggested names depending on what the user is typing. So that is it about the HTML. Right? Those are the two parts that are important. Okay, now the next bit is now the JavaScript or you can call it Ajax, simply JavaScript. Now, on Ajax, we simply create a function. You can see that the function begins here and ends here. You can tell by the indention. Eh? So that is where it ends. Now, this function goes by the name show hint, show hint, and it, re it receives one parameter. So the parameter it's going to receive, we are calling it str, just for string. Eh? So that's the parameter that it's going to receive. So th this is how we create a variable in JavaScript. You can create a variable, for example, in JavaScript by doing var, then the name of the variable. Or you can just create a variable by like that. Uh, without using the var keyword. So that's that's how we do it. Eh? Okay, now uh, I hope you've understood that the name of the function show hint. So that is the function that is going to be called on Kia and it's going to be passed the value to this particular variable str. Eh? Okay, now the next thing we're doing is we have an if statement uh, that is beginning here and ending here. So if string dot length now this is how we check the length of a string uh, in um, uh, in uh, javascript eh? so it has a function called dot length that is used to check the length of a string so for example if you had if you had uh, a variable called f name you can do f name dot length dot length and it's going to give you uh, the, the length of uh, uh, the value that has been saved on that particular uh, on that particular variable f name. Okay, so we, we're just checking to make sure that uh, whatever value has been passed has more than one character. So if it's zero, then we simply want to do one thing. Please look here very carefully. We want to use DOM. You remember we we talked about DOM, DOM, D document object model. So normally with document object model, this is how we use it. Document dot, then for example, get element by ID. You can get element by almost anything, by class, by blah, blah, blah. So here we are getting the element in the DOM, in the document, in the HTML body. We are getting it by ID and the ID of that particular uh, object is text hint. So we are simply getting the ID of this span here, eh? of this one. So if the string length is zero, we want to change its inner HTML. So dot inner HTML and we want it to be blank. So that's why we're saying is equals to then that double quotes. And of course, in JavaScript, we we simply end every statement with a semicolon, just like in PHP. I'm going to give you a minute to to just consume that before I continue as I sip my cup of coffee here.
Okay. Uh, so that is exactly what we're doing there. Then the other very important bit is this return. Eh? Return. So normally we, uh, we we use this return to exit the function. So when after we update, remember the string length is zero. So we just want to ensure that we delete any suggestion that had been put inside the span. Eh? So that is what we are doing here. But we also want to exit this function, the show hint function. Eh? So normally we exit the function when it meets the return statement. Uh, by the way, it's almost obvious. Uh, so when it gets to the return statement, then boom, we just exit. So nothing else can be executed after the return statement has been uh, executed. So that is why we have return there. Okay, otherwise, if the string length is greater than zero, then that is where we have the else here. So the else is beginning here and it's ending here. Eh? Now, the first thing we do is we create a variable to hold the XML HTTP request that we must create. So that's how we are creating the variable here. The variable name is XML HTTP. So var space XML HTTP. Then is equals to, then we create an object just like in C and in C++, JavaScript the same. So new, then the name of the object. Uh, uh, so uh, normally we, we put this and empty that if we, uh, uh, I think if I can remember very well, if uh, if we have what do we call it a constructor if we have a constructor uh, so that's why we are creating the new object so this particular xml http request is going to create a http xml http request object and it's going to save it on this variable xml http so i hope we are together after that now after that we use that particular object xml.http then we call a function inside that particular object which is called on ready state change on ready state change then we create another function so sorry so we have a function here uh, the function does not have a name ah, my keyboard my keyboard that's slow so we have a function here. It's starting from there and it's ending here. Please be very careful about this. Ending here. And you can see when we end it, we also use a semicolon. Unfortunately, uh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, so wh why do we have the semicolon? Uh, because generally we, we are saving this particular function and everything in it on, on this particular object on ready state change so it's, it's just like it's one line we are saving it there so that we can be able to send it over to to the server now uh, after that inside the function now we have an if statement now this if statement this if statement uses the ready state function. So this dot ready. So this, of course, refers to this object, XML HTTP. So this dot ready state is equals to four. That is number one. And this dot status is equals to 200. Uh -huh. I can't remember what each one of them uh, specifically refers to, but uh, we we have uh, we have remember we said it uses HTTP uh, HTTP request function. So we have different HTTP requests and HTTP responses, and each one of them gives you a particular value which is a variable so one of the http responses 
the value is 200 and one of them uh, uh, no no actually i think i'm gonna find this i hope i'm gonna find it but uh, for the 200 i'm sure it's a http response the value would be 200 if it's a success but this one this four here i think it is it, just one of the functions inside uh, the x uh, xml http object eh? so it simply say if this particular execution is ready and the status is a success so that is what it means then do this so what we're doing here is we get the text hint simply the span eh? then we update the inner html sorry we update the inner html of that particular span with whatever has been returned from the server so how we get whatever has been returned from the server is like this this dot response text again here we use a camel case and then semicolon so that is what we're doing here that if we've been able to send the data successfully to the server and we've gotten the response uh, that is what the if is doing then update the text hint uh, uh, update the span or any other document object whose id is text hint update its inner html with whichever data you've received uh, really uh, from php so that is what we're doing there now after we've done that the next thing we do is simply to send the request we send the request to the server uh, so i'm sure you're thinking like this should come before that uh, but uh, normally this comes you see we have this procedure here this one which ends there so that, that's one procedure which is simply creating a variable on ready state change and the function which is going to receive the response from the server now after that we have this that is now going to open uh, the connection now to the server so to do that we specify the method that we're going to use normally here most of the time we use get uh, and we're using get here so we use xml http dot open then the parameter we pass is the method do we want to use post or get you can also use post and then we send to this particular page php page in the in the server remember we just want to send something to the server so it has to be received by a php page so get hint.php so that is the name of the page then here we have a question mark and we have a variable Q. Then we're saying this variable is equals to, uh, then we are giving it some value. And remember, this value is the value we've received when the function was called. So, str. So, whichever value the user has typed on this particular input box uh, is what we're going to send to the server. Uh, then I can't remember why we have this true here. So also read about that. Okay, so that's why we, so th that's exactly what we're doing. Remember, anytime you're using get, eh, you want to send data uh, via the URL. So that's exactly what the whole of this bit is doing there up to there. Yeah. Uh, and of course, plus in JavaScript is used to concatenate. So we are just concatenating. Uh, because we can't just type the variable inside the double quotes it it will send a str instead of sending whatever is inside the variable eh? so that is why we are concatenating with a plus there okay so after we open the connection then we simply send we call the send function so xml http dot send so once we send that particular request then the response is going to be received here and some action is going to be taken now, of course, by this. 
uh, by this statement. So that's how uh, we are going to update this span here. You know, this is quite a lot at a go. Uh, it takes time for you to understand it, but I hope that I've simplified it. Just make sure that you rewatch it if you if you're still having a problem, but it takes time. So give yourself time. That's the most important thing. Be patient with yourself. Uh, you, you're going to get it with time. Uh, the, the other good news is that you don't have to cram this. You can always copy paste it uh, from the internet to your application. But it's important that you understand what each line really is doing. Uh, so that's very important. So again, I'm going to give you a minute to just reflect on uh, what we've said here. Okay, so this is just what I've been explaining. So I'm, I'm not gonna go over it again. But now we have a chance to look at the PHP file that is gonna get the HTTP request. So remember that file is get int.phpf. Now this particular file has an array of names. So normally you, you will save these names on your database. But for this particular example, they just save the names on an array so that as you type uh, and maybe you start with an A, then it gives you all the names that start with an A. Eh? So that's why you're having an array. Uh, but uh, normally you, you'll be searching against the database rather than an array. So that's important to, to remember. So uh, that's why here we're just creating an array uh, variable called a and we're just giving it assigning it all these names eh? we're just giving it some random random names you can see that we continue to add names to the array this next page but now this is how we receive the data that has been sent by ajax so of course we can either use the request super global or we can use get so here you can also use dollar sign underscore get because we specified the method as get eh? then uh, remember the parameter we passed on the url it was q eh? it was q so uh, the variable was q so we have to refer to that let me just go back so that i can show you that uh, actually it's also here so this one, this one, Q, Q. So you're just referring to this Q, right? Because now this Q is going to hold the value that we've passed it. 
So that's how we pick it up in PHP. So that's the queue that we are referring to there. Okay, then we are creating a variable here, assigning it to an empty string. The variable is called hint. Eh? Now here, we want to look up all the hints from the array if Q is different from an empty string. So we're just checking here. If Q is not empty, that is what we are doing. If Q is not empty, that means that Q has some characters in it. Eh? it it's not zero. It's not an empty string. So that's what we are doing here. If Q is not empty. So if it's not empty, we want to do a few things. We want to change everything in Q to lowercase by using the str to lower function. We also want to find out the length of Q, uh, the length of Q. So once we have the length of Q, we save it in the variable len. Uh, so str len, remember that particular function, php built-in function used to find the length. Now, after that, uh, this one is beginning from here to here. Or oh, the if statement was beginning from here to here. Okay. Ah, but there, I just discovered that I can actually be able to highlight the indention by doing that. I think that's beautiful. Okay, so let's look at the for each. Now, this for each, uh, we are creating a variable called, uh, no, we're not creating a variable. We are referring to the array A. Look here, A. See, that's the array name, A, A, this is A, A. So we are referring to that array. Now we want to, on each loop, we want to loop through the array. So on each loop, we want to save the value in a variable called name. So that is what you're doing here for each a as name like that then we have an if statement inside the for each uh, what is this supposed to do oh my god str i str hey i can't remember what are we doing here it's like it's a function we are passing it q substring substring i i really can't remember this i hope we have some explanation there so we're gonna check it i'm sorry for that uh uh, let's just go on, then you will see. But uh, inside that if statement, we we want to say if the hint is empty, then we want to fill in the name. We want to update the hint with the name. Eh? Else, uh, else else means hint is not empty we want to concatenate we want to add in more names eh? so that's why we are using the concatenation operator dot is equals to so if if it's empty we just add the name for example if they type a then it brings anna uh, but if we have another person's name beginning with a for example andrew then the else is going to be executed and it's going to add Andrew on the hint variable. So that is what is happening here. Uh, the only bit that I'm quite unable to uh, explain is this one. I hope we're going to read it in the coming slides. But okay, so uh, after we've concatenated the hint, uh, we want to echo it. Echo hint. And here we are using, here we are using, um, we are using the conditional operator, the conditional operator. So we're saying if hint is equals to an empty string, then pass this uh, return, no suggestion. Otherwise, 
So otherwise in that, return the hint. So that is what we are doing here. So it's either going to return no suggestion or it's going to return the names that have been saved inside the hint variable. So that's what we are doing here. The whole of this, sorry, the whole of this is simply going to echo. It's only going to echo either this, if hint has nothing in it, or it's going to echo everything that is inside hint. So that's what we are doing. So let's try and check that STRI, STR function. Oh, it has not been explained. Oh, sorry. So please check up. Hey, did I leave this out? Please check this out and just find out uh, what these functions are meant to do. So as a reading assignment, please do that. Uh, just these two. I'm really unable to remember what they're supposed to do. Eh? Okay. So generally, as I said, we normally use uh, Ajax to get data from uh, MySQL or to update the MySQL database rather than search data on arrays like we did in the previous example. Eh? Uh, so uh, Ajax can be used for interactive communication with the database. Eh? Let's put this image here to show you uh, again, how that is done. Eh? So normally there is a uh, there is a what? Uh, there is an action. Uh, there is an action that the user has uh, uh, triggered uh, on the browser, and that is going to be sent using AJAX as a request to the server. Now this particular request will be received by PHP, and PHP is going to communicate with the database. Then the database is going to get whatever is needed, give it back to PHP. PHP is going to send it back as an AJAX response. And the AJAX is going to receive it uh, on the callback. And it's going to update the DOM and the user interface. Uh, so that is just the process again. Uh, so it, it doesn't end at PHP. Uh, normally now PHP will also talk to the database and in this case the database is MySQL. Now in this example we're going to learn how a web page can fetch information from the database using uh, using Ajax. So in this example the user is going to select uh, 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 several names from a drop-down uh, list uh, using what we call the select statement. Eh? So they select, for example, if, if, if they select Joseph, then the details for this particular person is fetched from the database and printed eh? without refreshing the page. So that is what we're looking at here. Now, this is the database that, this is the table in my the MySQL table that has all the data, uh, including Joseph's data. See here. So we have three other people other than other than Joseph. Okay, so uh, we just want to we just want to look at the code that will make that possible. Eh? So uh, I split it into two because it couldn't fit on one page. So I'm just gonna begin again from the form like I did last time. Then we go back to the script, eh? but they're just on one page. Eh? Okay, so the form the form begins there, the form ends there. Inside the form, we have a select statement, begins there and ends there. Now this select statement, the name is users. It also has a JavaScript event attribute on change. Meaning, if they click something, then it's going to call a function, a JavaScript function, show user, and it's going to pass the value of that particular option that has been selected. So these are the options that we have. The first one is uh, select a person. The next one is Peter Griffin, uh, Louis, Joseph, and Glenn. Uh, of course normally 
with the select uh, uh, attribute, with the select form control, it, it is the value that is going to be passed to the database. Eh? The value of the value attribute. Like it's, it's not going to send. If we select Peter Griffin, it's not going to send Peter Griffin. It's going to send one. If we select Louis, then it's going to, is that Louis or Lois? It's going to send uh, the number two, like that. Eh? Okay, so that is what we have for the form. But we also have a div. Div is just like a paragraph. It's a block level element. Meaning if you add any other thing below it, it's going to begin from a new line. So this div, the ID is text hint. And it also has some, some information. Person information will be listed here. So of course, this is where we are going to update uh, the table with the person details once you select them. Eh? So that's what's gonna happen. So please remember, the user selects, the show user function is called and the value uh, which is either one, two, three, four is is passed to the, to the JavaScript. So let's go back to the JavaScript, which is done on the header. You don't have to do it on the head section, by the way. You can do it even at the bottom, the bottom of your HTML code. Okay, so here we have the function. Uh, we have the function begins from there to there. Inside the function, uh, we have the if statement and we also have the else. Okay, so the function is called show user and it receives a variable, one parameter. The name is string. So here we are saying if stream, string is, if str is equals to empty, then update the div whose ID is text hint. Change the inner HTML to make sure that it's empty, it doesn't have anything. Then we want to return, just get out, get out of the function, nothing else is going to be executed. Else, if str has some value, then, uh, <laughs> this is another one, okay, Th this is new, so just gonna tell you about it. So we have, we have that else, and we have that if, and we have this else. Eh? Uh, now, as you know, uh, this famous browser that was discontinued, it was discontinued actually, I think last year, it's called Internet Explorer, i.e. Internet Explorer. So it was the browser, the default browser for Microsoft. When you install Windows, it comes with it. So the problem with the browser, or at least it's thought to be the problem, is that most of the time it wasn't updated to catch up with the current trends in web development. And therefore, uh, for you to be able to create an XML HTTP request object, you had to invoke what we call the ActiveX object. So that's why we have this if statement. Eh? So we're saying if window.xml HTTP request. So this one is just gonna check uh, that uh, if this is, if this is uh, Internet Explorer version seven and above, or Firefox or Chrome or Opera or Safari, then create the object using this method. So this is just the normal method. Otherwise, if it's the older version of Internet Explorer, then create the object using this method. Eh? So that is just what we are doing here. So I can't explain further than that. But otherwise, here is our, uh, sorry, here is our function. So we're just creating uh, this on ready state change to receive the response from the server. And of course, I explained this. And we want to update the text hints. We want to update its inner HTML uh, 
uh, with the response text like that then we open the connection and we send the request so just sending it to a page called getuser.php using method get when we uh, when we call this particular page we pass it a variable q and the value that the user has selected so that is the that is really the javascript it's just the same by the way come here auto suggest eh? okay so uh the page on the server called by the javascript is called that now this particular page is going to run a query against the mysql database and it will return the results in an html table so we just want to see how this page the call for that particular page eh? okay so this is the page get user.php uh, it's a it's a php page but it's all with html eh? in it eh? so here on the head we just have some styling for styling the table and the table data and the table head eye okay but most importantly is the php inside the body so this is the php we have some more in the next page so this is just the beginning so of course we begin by getting the data that has been passed eh? that has been passed uh, 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 from the HTTP request from Ajax. Eh? So we use the get method. As I told you, you can either use uh, dollar sign underscore request or dollar sign underscore request or get. Eh? So we get the value of the variable Q that has been passed on the URL. And here we have the int val function that is simply used to ensure that whatever has been passed is actually an integer okay so the next thing we do of course is to connect to the database uh, and this is an if statement to just check if the connection worked if it didn't work then it's going to print out the error and also stop the execution of any other line of code beyond this line eh? okay So again, this is also just the code for the connection, uh, the connection of the database. So I'm not going to explain that. Uh, but we also have uh, the select statement here, MySQL select. Actually, the connection ends here, selecting the DB. Yeah. Okay, so we have a variable called SQL. Then we have the select statement, select star from user where ID. So you see, Q is actually going to be a variable eh? rather than the names. I'm going to take the value. So where ID is equals to the variable Q. So it's going to pick up uh, that. And of course, here we are, we are executing the query using my SQLI underscore query. We pass it the connection and the SQL query, the select statement. Then after that, we want to echo. We want to echo the whole of this up to there so we're just echoing the whole of that so of course uh, because we have an opening here and a closing here so we close that but this is simply going to print out the table header the table header it's going to print out first name last name age town hometown job then after that we now print the dynamic part of it. So that's why we must use a while or a for each loop. So we just want to pick data from the MySQL table. So while row is equals to MySQL underscore fetch underscore array, then we pass it the result. The result is this one here that we got from the query. And uh, we just print an opening row and we close the row here then the data from the database 
by referring to the column names and using the row array because it's going to return an array. So it's going to print the first name from the database, the last name, the age, the town, and the job. And of course, down here, we end the table and we close. It's important to note that normally the response that PHP sends back to Ajax is normally done via an echo. Normally done via an echo. So whatever you echo is simply going to be sent back as the response text. Whatever is going to whatever is going to be given on the response text is whatever has been echoed by the PHP page. So that's also important to, to remember. Okay, so I've already explained that. Now, uh, Ajax can be used to create user-friendly but also very interactive searches. Uh, so we say one of the first applications of Ajax that made it very popular was the live search by Google. Eh? So when I read this, I tried to look for an appropriate image uh, to fill up uh, the white space here. And I got this one and I thought it would be nice to share it. So what is a user-friendly web application? It's very easy to navigate, it's easy to read, it's mobile friendly, it's, it loads a little bit faster, so less loading time, and easy browsing experience. So like a live search, you can actually see here that they're actually using an icon for a live search. It's very easy to browse and get whatever you want. So live search is one of the things that makes that possible. Eh? Okay, so uh, these are some of the benefits of live searches. Number one, the results are shown as you type. Also, the results become narrower as you continue to type. Eh? So when you type Kelvin, uh, as you saw, when you type Kelvin, then Kelvin, all the Kelvins come. But when you begin, when you do a space and you start KA, then only those people whose first name, for example, is Kelvin, and uh, the next name maybe is K, starts with a K and A, it becomes narrower and narrower. Eh? Also, when the results become too narrow, you can remove some characters in order to see broader results. So these are just some of the benefits of Ajax live searches. Eh? Okay. The, the other application, uh, for example, of Ajax is the live polls. Uh, so this is what we call a live poll. And for example, if you're on Twitter, uh, I'm sure most likely you've uh, you've seen a live poll. Uh, uh, or maybe last year during elections, we had so many uh, candidate polling sites. I'm sure maybe you, you you voted for a particular candidate at some point. And uh, when, when you vote like that, for example, uh, do you like PHP and does it so far? So when you click yes or you click no, then really you, you, you're also able to see the results as it is currently, eh? immediately. You're able to also see the results. So this is what we call the live poll eh? without uh, the need to reload uh, the page. So ladies and gentlemen, in this particular lesson, I want to give you a practical assignment that I want you to work on. So the first one is on live search, and the next one is on a live poll. Now, on our on our project, on the project that we've been working on, uh, the voting site, I want you to include a live search for the candidates, so that someone can search for the candidates. Uh, so include a live search for a candidate. And number two, uh, for the uh, for the voting, I want you to include the live poll feature. So I want it to be possible for someone to vote, for example, for the president, and they are able to see the results for the president uh, so far, immediately. So those are the two things I want you to implement over the weekend. Then next week, 
uh, I'll use this as your uh, term project. I'll give you marks for this. So next week we meet for the labs uh, all the way uh, from Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday. We meet for the labs. Then Friday also we're going to meet just to wind it up all and also do some final revision for the uh, final revision for the for the semester as you prepare for your exams in the next week eh? and the following week. So please make sure that you work on this. Also remember to uh, share this with uh, your colleagues so that they are aware uh, because you, you uh, I'll assign marks for that. Otherwise, thank you very much. I know this topic can be a bit, uh, the learning curve for this topic can be a bit challenging, but again, I want to remind you to give yourself time you're going to understand it when you start playing with it better. So thank you very much and have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.